on the interactions between muscle and nerve. We're going to talk about an accidental in muscle, how it then causes a contraction, how we can then use those uh, nerve potentials to um, generate a certain amount of force, and then how these are all affected by exercise. I'm going to go a little out of order from the book today. They, they start with motor units, but I think it's important that we actually jump into the function of the nerve as it relates to an action potential. So the objectives for this first, uh, first video session is just to understand the role of myelin uh, in the propagation of action potentials. And then second, what, we're, what we need to do, and I'm going to walk you through, is a recreation of the permeability of sodium and potassium uh, in the neuron during the action potential. Uh, similar to uh, cross-bridge cycling, uh, the action potential is a um, process of a bunch of moving parts and a, mo and a bunch of moving pieces. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, play a video for you that kind of walks you through this in a much more animated fashion as, a, as opposed to me trying to use words um, to describe all these meaningful pieces. After the video, we'll come back and again I'll walk you through that uh, uh, sodium potassium as it uh, is essentially re responsible for making an action potential. So we'll see that movement again uh, recreated from the video this time. Uh, just in a, a little bit more of a boring figure. What you will see and hear in this presentation is the development of myelin in the peripheral nervous system and the propagation of the action potential along a myelinated axon. This multimedia presentation will be most helpful if you already have a good understanding of the Schwann cell and the electrochemical process of the neuron, called the action potential. The Schwann cell forms a protective covering around the axon. Schwann cells start to develop in the embryo and continue to increase the wrapping around the axon through childhood. This development increases the thickness of the wrappings which peaks in adolescence. This is why teenagers have such quick responses. The Schwann cell contains the typical cell organelles and cell membrane structure. However, notice as the Schwann cell surrounds the axon that the nucleus and other organelles are squeezed to the outside wrapping of the cell. This outer wrapping of the Schwann cell is called the neurolemma. The inner lining is made up of layers upon layers of cell membrane. This inner wrapping is called the myelin sheath. You will recall that the cell membrane, called the fluid mosaic model, is made up of a bilayer of lipids integrated with proteins. The thicker the myelin, in other words, the more layers of cell membrane making up the myelin, the more advantageous it is to the axon. One advantage is the regeneration of severed axons. Another advantage is an increase in the speed of the propagation of the action potential along the axon. The rest of this presentation will concentrate on the increased speed of action potentials down the length of the myelinated axon. Here is the neuron, and you can see the repeated Schwann cell membrane forming the myelin. Note that there is a small space between the Schwann cells where the axon is not covered by the neuroglial cell. These spaces are called nodes of Rambier. From what you already know, action potentials occur at the axon hillock and continue to be repeated away from the cell body, much like dominoes falling one after another. An action potential starts on a polarized membrane, which is negative 70. A stimulus causes the sodium gates to open slightly and sodium starts to trickle into the cell. If the cell reaches negative 60 or threshold, the sodium gates open wide and sodium floods in, bringing the inside of the axon to positive 30. At this point, the sodium gates close and potassium gates open. Potassium starts to pour out of the cell. This allows the neuron to become polarized again. Then the sodium-potassium pump starts to actively transport sodium out and potassium back into the neuron. First we will look at the propagation of the action potential in the unmyelinated axon. Propagation is the repeating of action potentials down the axon. The action potential is repeated because as the sodium comes in, it diffuses to adjacent areas within the axon. As the sodium increases in this area, threshold is reached. Sodium gates open wide, sodium rushes in, causing depolarization and an action potential. As the sodium enters this area, it diffuses through the axoplasm and another action potential is created. This continues down the length of the axon. Now look at the myelinated axon. 
The same process applies to the myelinated axon. An action potential develops, and as the sodium comes in, it diffuses through the cytoplasm of the axon. It continues to diffuse through the portion of the axon wrapped in myelin. The increased sodium concentration reaches the node of Ranvier, increases the axoplasm to negative 60, and depolarization occurs. The sodium gates open wide, sodium floods in, and we have an action potential. Again, the sodiums diffuse through the axoplasm, reaching the next node. An action potential develops. The process is continued down the myelinated axon, passing from node to node. Compare the unmyelinated axon with the myelinated axon. You can see that action potential reached the end of the myelinated axon more rapidly than the unmyelinated axon. The speed of the propagation is faster going from node to node than action potentials that develop adjacent to the previous action potential. So I hope you enjoyed the action potential video. Uh, if you're still a little confused, again, YouTube is a fantastic resource for students. Just go in, type in action potentials. There's tons and tons of them that will all kind of show you these in, in slightly different ways. Okay, so if we think about um, uh, the important part of an action potential really is the movement of, of ions. And so uh, the two ions that are ultimately responsible for this is sodium, or Na and potassium, which is K. Again, uh, I wish I had better names and letters for those, right? Um, but you guys should be pretty familiar with, with the Na and K. Um, so the way the resting membrane potential is set up in a nerve uh, is that uh, the sodium is located all outside of the cell. There is a ton of sodium, uh, and if you think about it in terms of concentration gradients, right? Its main goal is to get inside the cell as much as it can. However, the cell membrane is completely impermeable. So we can uh, kind of draw that here. This isn't going to be pretty, but there's our, our, our cell membrane. And all our sodiums are out here. And we have a lot of them. That's not to say the inside isn't deplete of sodium. There's just a relatively small number of, um, of those ions. So then if we think of our other key ion, which is potassium, so we'll change our colors. So we actually have a lot of potassium in the cell here. And a relatively small amount of potassium outside of the muscle cell. So this is at rest, resting membrane potential. Um, as the video demonstrated nicely and much better than I could try to do up here on the, the screen, is that we kind of get this wave. So we get these uh, slight sodium and potassiums coming in, and then ultimately they will uh, alter the potassium and sodium concentrations in here, and we can get kind of slight little blips here. However, once we reach that um, magical threshold number, so our resting membrane potential here right around 70, that's, that's for neurons, it's different for, for each cell, but that's a, a good start for here. So a negative 70. So what happens is, um, is when we reach threshold, then the permeability for sodium potassium increases, right? So what that means is we are opening channels that specifically allow sodium in. These are two-way channels, but when we do that, what happens is we open this the sodium channel, and since there's so much of it outside, it comes flooding in. You'll notice I made sure to draw these sodiums with the correct charge, right? So these are positive ions, so when they come rushing in, we go from a negative 70 to now having this influx of positive ions, which then raises our membrane potential in a positive manner. So that's the first thing that happens, and you'll see the probability for potassium or for sodium goes up, and you'll see that the action potential very much reflects this uh, increase in uh, sodium coming into the cell. So if we kind of draw a line here, at the peak of that, what happens then is that the uh, sodium channels then stop, they close, and they stop letting sodium come into the cell. 
that point we are very positive. And then the next thing that happens in the cell is we then open up the permeability for the potassium channels, right? So these are open later. Um, and when they start to open, in this case, it is the opposite of sodium, right? So they're going to follow their concentration gradient. And in this next scenario, all of our potassium ions are going to flow down there. So let's see, I can. Now we're kind of flip flopped, right? So we have a bunch of sodium inside and a bunch of potassium, very few sodium and potassium outside. So in this situation then, what's gonna happen is all the potassium is gonna go through its channel and they are gonna rush out. When those positive ions, again, potassium is also a positive ion, when those ions then uh, rush out, then that of course makes the inside of the cell more negative, a leaving of positive charges equals um, a negative, um, in a negative action or a negative voltage inside the cell and so you can see here then the action potential starts to fall and become more negative negative. and then uh, essentially in order to um, get that back to our not our normal resting uh, potential then we have this specialized uh, protein here which we call the sodium potassium pump and what it does is it takes the sodium from inside the cell and exchanges it for the potassium inside the cell. Um, and so uh, essentially we can flip-flop these until we get back to this original situation of mostly potassium and on the inside and mostly sodium on the outside. Once we get back to that, then we are ready to have a second action potential. So um, I hope that helped clarify the video a little bit and uh, my, my uh, drawings weren't uh, completely terrible. Uh, in the next section, we'll cover motor units.